Hey everyone, we are here with Ken Baxter. You know, you're probably the most famous person I've had on this show. Am I the most famous person that has interviewed you? You're the most famous person I know. But oh. Natalie oh. Lou was on the show. She's more famous. Than me. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. And I see you wore your suit jacket. Uh, I thought I was the only one that could wear that, but we'll, we'll make you, an you know this is not a mistake. Yeah, I did this did on that. purpose after watching. You did that on purpose. So this is there's a lot of stuff going on in in this interview. Um, this one is brought to you by Pine Grove Hall, um, and they uh, recently opened, and it's at the bottom of Pine Grove Mountain, and uh, Liz Grove actually gave us some photos that we're going to show here. Um, they have great food, the, the outside and inside, and everything's uh, redone, and cocktails, there's live music, stage lights, and you actually helped build some things. I did. I'd, I've been there for a year, wow. working on this place. Right after last year's show, I went there, and... Uh, I've never left. I sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> and this is to promote Philosophy of Hope number two. Um, and this is going to be a virtual show at Pine Grove Hall. And this is all to benefit the Jan Marie Foundation. And we're going to put a link to, to donate in, in the video. Excellent. And tell me about, about last year's show and a little bit what we're in store for this year. Last year's show was a, a huge success, obviously. It went over well. And we added uh, the theater aspect on stage at the State Theater. And obviously, we can't do that this year. And that's what I enjoy doing. So we did manage, however, with the help of the Pine Grove Hall, to use their stages to put on what would be, I guess you call it the clip notes version of this show, which we hope to do again someday, probably at the State Theater. But this will be a broken down version with some clips from last year and featuring four or five new songs this year. And I'm really looking forward to it. We're ready. Yeah, and, and last year was incredible. I mean, it was filled, and you had the whole, there was like a children's choir, and you were in a, a cage, and there was, you guys were running around getting chased by cops. And, <laughs> yeah. There'll be some repeat appearances from last year. Uh, and, uh, like my son was there in the choir, and, and the, the best band the city could put together for the night. And uh, we don't have access to all of that this year, so... Unfortunately, it's going to come down to me. Yeah, scary yes. thought. And that is going to be live streaming from Facebook on October 10th yep. at 8 o'clock. It will. I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, actually, but uh, like filming. Yep. You know, last year was a little easier. There was so much going on. And this one's a little more intimate. And you, you know, you're a performer. Uh, playing in front of a thousand people sometimes is easier than sitting in front of five people watching you. And this this night, by the standards of COVID, there's nobody in the place, and so we're streaming live, and that's that's a little hectic. So I'm a little nervous. Yeah. I admit it. I'm excited to see how it looks, because like the lightings, there's lots of lights there. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's an understatement. The lighting is probably, uh, I mean, it, it might be one of the top qualities of the place but the the drapes the stage the setting the bar it's just an amazing place to film and so the opportunity is there and we're going to use it the jana marie foundation so that that means a lot to me i actually used to know jana marie and lived with her for a little bit there um what does the foundation mean to you well as you know i also lost a son to suicide and have been attached to this family. And, and to me, it's the foundation is one thing. It's the family, the, the Viserys. They're just amazing. And um, I lean on them, actually, to, to do what I can't do. This year's theme is about relationships. And as it started out, it was relationships between your family, your friends, and maybe loved ones. And we've extended because the relationship that we want to talk about is the one with yourself. Most people leave that one last on the list. And it sounds like a cliche, but if you don't have a relationship with yourself, you're not any good for anyone else. And this year, we have a relationship with society alone. I mean, 2012, just, I mean, 2012, yeah, that's sorry, right. 2020, right. just say the word. And, and all of a sudden you realize we're in this. Well, yeah. It's kind of like that movie, 2012. Uh, that's yeah. exactly what yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. We're able to actually take a step back, especially on this particular evening, and just entertain you. And the message is there. The relationships are there. And uh, the interesting is that what, the last time I spoke to them, we've actually equaled, if not surpassed, last year's. And that's the impressive moment to me. And being able to speak openly about 
mental health. Well, obviously speaking, I never have problems yeah. Just yeah. babbling. Yeah, I told me I had to speak up in this thing so the mic picks it up, but that's not, <laughs> not a problem for Ken here. Not a problem for me. Yeah. We have a way of speaking about the hard things, maybe even things that people tend not to speak about because I can actually hide in song. Uh, and basically that's been my outlet throughout my life. I can tell you the truth of how I'm feeling through a song, not so much maybe face to face or but the words are easier, lyrical. So there's a lot of stories to be told. Uh, one of the things that we say in the show, without giving it away, is that my son in particular, his story, I can tell you stories about him, but his story ended when he was 20 years old. And there are people out there whose stories we need to help write. And that's what these shows are about, helping other people. I mean, my grief is real. And, and uh, Jana Marie... Uh, through her family, it's all real. But the idea of their foundation is what you can do for people out there that are feeling the same way. And we're here with your book, and that's called The Philosophy of Arson. Yes, you don't want to do a show called The Philosophy of Arson. So <laughs> yeah. The Philosophy of Hope is a lot better. Obviously, this is a story all in itself. But yeah. this is what everything's based on. This is uh, to have the book published by Kendall Hunt this year, and it's actually being taught at Penn State this semester. Wow. It has the album that we had spoken to attached to it. That we keep a little separate from the shows. You get, as you understand, you came to the show, you get little bits of my story because it helps understand why I'm here and where all the songs came from. And this is a memoir of the last, of a five-year period of my life where I ended up um, in prison and basically losing my entire life. And, yeah. and, and again, it, that's the book. The focus of this show is the hope that I came out with which is why we call the show The Philosophy of Hope. But I am very proud of the book. A couple of things that stuck out, because you also did like an interview in a magazine. Dead Center Magazine, Fig, yeah. I believe, yes. So, so I read that whole thing, and I think in, in that it says whenever you were in, in jail, you made a cardboard cutout I of did. a keyboard <laughs> so you could play and you could just hear the music in your head while you were Yes, playing. there's several songs written, uh, and some of them are on the album. And funny you had mentioned the piano, because that was a big point of last year's show. I wrote these songs sitting on the floor on a piece of cardboard that was actually well-crafted. The, the keys were exactly the size. Uh, guys from the plate shop snuck back the, the black glue to make the black keys with, oh, yeah. and that took a while. They so, weren't weighted keys, though. Uh, they are not weighted keys, <laughs> yeah. but, it, it, but I could hear the music, and so I started learning to play by math, and that's part of the book. Uh, and uh, I wrote a bunch of songs, and we put one of them in last year's show, and another one is going to be featured in this year's show, another one written completely in the dark, that when I uh, actually got out and started playing an actual piano again, was astonished that they were real songs. Sitting on a floor playing a piano doesn't leave me in a moment of sanity, I guess. But it it, yeah. it happened, and it was real, and uh, the songs are real, and the experience is for sure real. Do not regret it one bit. It's easily the five, I'm going to call it the five most productive years of my life. Wow. Which is uh, the the point that the book is different. I'm not writing about the horrors of prison. I'm writing about the opportunity that it creates if you're willing to do the work. And we talk about that in the show, that there's a really good chance that I shouldn't be here. shouldn't be here sitting with you. Um, meeting you is, I consider you a person that I never should have met. So doing that makes me realize I do belong here. A and you belong in this world. Together, yeah. we make a difference. You've made a difference since the day I met you. Being involved with the Jan Marie Foundation helps. And, and I can say it helps. I'm, I'm a part of it. And that's all it's about. When I talk about rewriting people's stories, that's what we're here for. That's what you're here for. The book, to me, is very emotional. Still, It's still strange. It's still hard to talk about. Um, but there it is. And the, and the, if we can ever get my son... Uh, uh, you know, two days of freedom from his busy schedule will actually finish mixing the album. It's just waiting. And you were just saying before we started here that you sent the audio from last year's Philosophy of Hope to your son who, like, yes, what he he's do? A, he, he's an, just an incredible production engineer, and uh, he's been working in on California, the songs. Right? Yeah, he's in California, out at Igloo Studios, and uh, he's doing, like, five movies at once this this week. <laughs> and uh, so I, I talked to him maybe once a month and we're waiting for an opportunity to go back. We had uh, members of the studio bands from Sarah Bareilles and John Mayer all come together for a day, much to my uh, 
frozen face as I sat there and went, I'm playing with who? Yeah. And what they did in the literal eight hours that it took to record this album, I'm still astonished. I came back home, we brought in Molly Countermine, she did all her vocals, I played my parts, and that's just sitting and waiting for him to get a free moment. Again, backed up completely by 2020, so it's all of a sudden once they started working again, when the Los Angeles isn't either A on fire or something else. Yeah. He has, we can, we can fly out <laughs> yeah. there and finish this. There was like a fire tornado I saw. I was it's like, just oh my insane. God. It's, it, and you said it's it, it's not 2012. It is. It's that movie 2012. <laughs> yeah. The song you're playing today and you brought your beautiful yeah. Taylor, which I love Taylor's and it's all tuned in an interesting tuning. What this, yeah. what, what's this song about that you're about to play? Well, this song is, uh, of course, it's going to be a sad song, but it was, I couldn't decide when I was writing this. It's called, How Do I Say Goodbye? And originally, I was wondering, am I saying goodbye to my son? Am I saying goodbye to a relationship? This song is both. It's about losing someone on many levels and trying to just keep moving forward. How do I make 